This is Kathy Beal of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with Astro Insight for the week of March 2nd, 2020. The energy does shift this week quite a bit, actually. We are in the final week of Mercury being retrograde. For some people, this has been pretty nice. I've actually heard from people who've had their intuition heightened and have been experiencing a kind of softened, magical version of life. Uh, Other people, including me, have been phenomenally spacey, losing things like crazy. And I know for a large number of people, this has been extremely uncomfortable and disorienting partially because of the pervasive boundary blurring that occurs. The shifts this week get our attention with a vengeance and pull us out of all of that. If you want to say stuff's getting real, insert a different word for stuff if you want, there is definitely a big streak of that. We have this week three of the five super conjunctions that color the month of March. Now, a super conjunction is when two bodies meet in the way we normally think of in a conjunction, and they're also lining up by declination, which has to do with distance from the equator, and this usually stretches out over a period of time. All month long into April, expansive Jupiter is meeting with Pluto, the lord of death, rebirth, regeneration, transformation, metamorphosis, also secrets, criminality, backroom deals, in the sign of Capricorn. So that's the undercurrent for everything. Here's what adds to the picture this week. The other planet of indulgence, like Jupiter, the other planet of money and desire, like Pluto, which is Venus, has a protracted meeting with the most erratic, unpredictable, radical change agent that we've got in the sky, Uranus now. Uranus is in the sign that Venus rules. So Venus is calling this dance. Now, this is a lot more technicality than I normally give you in an Astro Insight weekly podcast. But there's something about understanding the technicality that will help you. This is a recipe for breakthroughs, plot twists, sudden shifts, different ways of looking at things having to do with Earth plane level, physical stuff that's really, really important to us that we want. Relationships, love, money, our toys, what we like to have around us, our self-worth, our own cash. Stuff's getting real. This particular meeting begins with something saying no, something putting limits, something saying you got to put order in the situation. Venus having an argument with Saturn, the planet of adulting. And then all kinds of other things blow out of, grow out of, spring out of whatever that no is. That no, that demand for structure or order or responsibility or accountability has the force of a swimmer getting to the end of of a lane in the pool and turning around and pushing off the side of the pool in order to go further. There is something that pushes us, pushes action out of this. So if you felt stuck, Well, you're not going to feel stuck by the end of the week. In the midst of this, Mercury in his retrograde slides back into the sign of Aquarius. In the midst of this, we get a little more objectivity and distance and looking at the big picture, which could translate to coming across as cold, coming across as unconcerned, which could add to the general communication issues that are part of a Mercury retrograde. So it might be easy for you to take something personally or for someone to misread 
and take something personally because you're coming across as logical. But logic really does begin to re-enter the picture. Only it's got a lot to fight against because of the third super conjunction that happens. So yes, we do have this ability to kind of fly up and sit in the tree and watch what is going on around us and not get so caught up in it. But at the same time, there is a countervailing influence that completely immerses us in it, whatever it may be. And that is a relatively short super conjunction between the sun and Neptune in Pisces. Neptune in its home sign. Neptune, the planet of magic and illusion and inspiration and divine guidance and what I call the cosmic fog machine you may get weirdly clear about what all of whatever's going on in your life, whatever is going on in the world, whatever is going on in the spin that passes for public information. You may know yourself much better because of it. This particular meeting can bring you incredible compassion for yourself. You can let yourself off the hook for a lot with this. This is a give yourself slack moment. A give yourself slack. Well, I was going to say imperative, but it's actually much more natural than that. It just simply happens. So putting all these weird pieces together, very likely you will see something developing more and more and more and more in your life, in your infrastructure, in your oh, let's just say, government, stuff coming more and more to light, showing an evolution that is occurring. You may be told no. You may experience a constriction of the heart of money, of your being able to have something that you want, and you careen off of that into a lightning field where other possibilities start breaking open. Maybe in your heart, maybe you let go of something, maybe something flies to you. You get a little bit more out of the confusion and you either (laughs) paradoxically give yourself over to it completely. I know that is exactly the opposite of what I just said. Welcome to life as it currently is. And or you just allow yourself to go with it, to be human, to forgive yourself and recognize what you can and can't do and just give yourself over to the flow. Just after the weekend, at the beginning of next week, we will have a clarifying Virgo full moon and Mercury will station direct. So see what you see, see how you feel, gather information Notice what blows open, notice what changes, notice what's going on under your feet, under your nose. Homing thought of the week, what's the message for me? Song of the week, I have two, lead us out of the night from Come From Away and Answer Me from the band's visit. Yes, they're both Broadway shows, fairly current. And the image is a laser pointer. You will learn where this is all heading and how it fits into the year. In my talk about the spring equinox, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going to be the fall, which is going to be available for download by the equinox. There's an order link at my site, and I will put it below. Also, my 2020 guide shows where this all fits. And, of course, there's a lot more information in my forecast for the month of March, which is already up at my site, empowermentunlimited.net, where you can sign up for my mailing list and book a session with me. And, by the way, if you're curious about what is going on with the U.S. presidential election, I do have a talk coming up on the Democratic presidential candidates' charts, how they fit in with the U.S. chart, and what the transits show may or may not happen for each of these individuals. The link for that is also below. There's always a lively discussion on Facebook at the page Empowerment Unlimited and my group, the Astro Insight Lounge. I have lots of bonus content available at patreon.com slash Kathy Beal. 
and I am, as always, deeply grateful to the people who are supporting this work there, which you can also do for as little as a dollar a month. You'll find me on Instagram at at K.A. Beal and on YouTube at the Professional Aquarian Channel. Talk to you next week.